Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. As we all know, the 90s wasn't really a good decade for animated films that weren't made by Disney. Of course, one of the folks who was going through a rough filmmaking period during that decade was Don Bluth. Now, we all know about Don Bluth's successful movies that he has made during the 80s, like The Secret of Nim, The Land Before Time, An American Tale, and All Dogs Go to Heaven. Sadly, before he released Anastasia, Don's other 90s animated films weren't really as successful, even though A Troll in Central Park is known as his absolute worst, despite the fact that several folks consider it redeemable these days, and others like, well, like The Pebble and the Penguin and Rockadoodle are pretty much guilty pleasures of mine. But there is one animated film in Blute's library that several fans either like or hate. But what do I have to say about it? Well, let's take a look and find out. Released on March 30th, 1994, the movie is Thumbelina. So, let's get started. Born of a flower and growing to only a couple of inches tall, poor Thumbelina is worried she'll never meet someone her own size, until she happens to catch the eye of the fairy prince Cornelius. Just as soon as she finds love, however, it's torn away from her when she is kidnapped by Mrs. Toad. Now Thumbelina has to escape Mrs. Toad's grasp and search for Prince Cornelius. Luckily, there's a whole city of animals willing to help her. Now, you may be asking, what do I personally think of the movie? Well, it started out promising, but after the first song, things start to feel like a roller coaster, so... In other words, this movie is pretty much a meh, in my opinion. <sighs> Even though, I used to like this movie when I was little. But, to further explain why, let's move on to Mustang Notes. The film was in production from February 1991 to May 1993 at Don Bluth Ireland LTD, formerly known as Sullivan Bluth Studios at the time in Dublin, Ireland. Even though principal recording and animation would not begin until early 1992, the film was completed with funds from filmmaker John Borman and Hong Kong-based media assets after Don Bluth Entertainment filed for bankruptcy. It was originally scheduled to be distributed by MGM in North America and J&M Entertainment overseas, and was also originally slated for a Thanksgiving 1993 release in the United States. However, by the time it was completed, both companies dropped an agreement due to concerns about the bankruptcy of Blue Studio. Warner Brothers subsequently bought the distribution rights in March 1993, and Thumbelina was released the following year. When it was released, it was preceded by the Animaniacs short, I'm Mad, which I find is a very relatable and underrated short. Also, as a bonus fact, as of March 20th, 2019, the film rights are now owned by Disney through 20th Century Fox, which had obtained the film rights from Warner Brothers in the early 2000s. Speaking of which... I'm one of many folks who are pretty mixed about the whole Disney-Fox merging. Because in my opinion, many of Fox's films and TV shows don't feel like Disney material. And if you look at their resume, then you'll know what I mean. As for the animation, well, while the animation is okay, and the movie's concept was very promising... The story is not 100% good. You see, some parts of the movie, mainly the winter scene, 
drags the story at times. Also, there are parts of the movie that I think could have been written better. Plus, the movie's soundtrack is a bit of a mixed bag for me, considering the fact that the songs were written by Barry Manilow, whom I remember for singing New York City Rhythm, Can't Smile Without You, and Coco Cabana. However, let's go over the songs that I do like in this movie. First, we have Follow Your Heart, sung by a swallow named Giacomo. While this song is briefly sung during the movie's intro, the second version is the best in my opinion. Not just because it has a good message, but it's also accompanied by a bunch of showbirds. The second song in the movie that I like is the romance song, Let Me Be Your Wings. Now, there are actually five versions heard throughout the movie, but the one that I think is the most memorable is the version sung by Thumbelina and Cornelius, despite the fact that it happens about five minutes after they meet for the first time. Another song that I like in this movie is called Soon, sung by Thumbelina. To me, I don't really like it as much as the previous two songs that I mentioned, but I think it's very soothing and emotional, and it's very tear-jerking. As for the other songs, well, to me, the title song, Thumbelina, is a bad song due to the fact that it's sung by a bunch of farm animals who can't sing if their lives depended on it. The only positive thing I can say about it is that our main heroine has a few verses and solos throughout the song. Then there's On the Road, sung by a family of traveling performing toads known as the Singers de España which consists of Mrs. Toad and her three sons. While the song does have a jazzy beat to it, the pacing for the verses are really fast that you can't get a word in. It's almost like they're singing in a silly sort of gibberish, even when they force Thumbelina to harmonize with them. Then we come to Your Beautiful Baby, sung by Berkeley Beetle and his Beetle Chorus. To me, this song also has a nice jazzy rhythm, but Beatles singing is really... <laughs> it's really hilarious. However, one thing ruins it for me. You see, after Thumbelina gets twirled, her costume falls off, which causes the other bugs to laugh at her, and then the ending verse goes very mean-spirited, with Beatle calling Thumbelina ugly. Lastly, we have Mary the Mole, sung by Mrs. Fieldmouse. The only thing I can say about this song is that it won a Razzie Award for Worst Original Song. And by listening to the lyrics, I can definitely understand why, despite the fact that it's sung by a legendary and talented actress. Anyway, let's go over the characters and their voice actors. Let's start with our main character, Thumbelina, voiced by Ariel slash Queen Emmeline herself, Jody Benson. Like in the original fairy tale, Thumbelina is a tiny young woman born from a barley corn plant and who's not as big as her adoptive mother's thumb. To me, Thumbelina is very sweet and beautiful, and despite her small size, she has a massive heart, and she's extremely romantic. She can easily be brought down by the world, and she's known for having good friends to keep her afloat. Plus, as usual, Jody Benson's singing is really amazing. Next we come to Thumbelina's love interest, Prince Cornelius, voiced by Gary Imhoff who voiced Harry Osborn in the 1990s Spider-Man TV series. Huh. Imagine Prince Eric and Cornelius competing against each other for Jody Benson's affection. <clears throat> anyway, 
Cornelius starts out as a big-shot, headstrong teenager, but later, after Thumbelina is kidnapped, he becomes a concerned, heroic, and a more courageous man. He's also very cocky when battling Grendel the Toad. Plus, I think his bumblebee, Buzz, is pretty cool, despite the fact that I'm terrified of real bees. Also, the part where Cornelia gets frozen was really heartbreaking. Next, we have our first supporting character, Giacomo, voiced by Gino Conforti. Now, Giacomo is my favorite character in the movie, due to the fact that he's a wise swallow who speaks with a French accent and serves as our partial narrator for the movie. Also, Giacomo has a very caring and optimistic attitude, always wanting to encourage others to follow their hearts, believing that they can get through anything impossible, no matter what. And he always helps others on their way as well. Mostly throughout this movie, Giacomo flies around asking several animals, like a rabbit, a fox, and a bear, where to find the Vale of the Fairies. However, I kind of wish that Giacomo could have at least flown Thumbelina home and then searched for the Vale. But then again, I guess Don Bluth's writers can't make this movie end too early. Plus, I felt bad when Giacomo got hurt when he had a thorn stuck in his wing. Next, we come to the Jitterbugs, Natty, Little Bee, and Baby Bug, voiced by Tawny Sunshine Glover, Michael Nunns, and Kendall Cunningham. These three children are decent supporting characters due to them partly accompanying Thumbelina back home, but they do get scared off by Berkeley Beetle. Later, they save Cornelius from his frozen state by building a fire underneath him. Next we have Thumbelina's mother, voiced by the late Barbara Cook. To me, she's a very sweet woman, and she's also a hard-working farmer. Plus, she likes to tell Thumbelina stories about fairies. Also, she made Thumbelina a very special dress when she sings her own cover of Soon, while she hopes for her daughter to come home. Next is an old farm dog named Hero, vocalized by Will Ryan, who got to be in several other Don Bluth films, like The Land Before Time, Rockadoodle, and An American Tale. To me, Hero seems like a loyal dog, and he tries his best to look after Thumbelina, even though he did fail to protect her from Mrs. Toad. Also, Hero does manage to tell Cornelius about Thumbelina being kidnapped. Next, we have Cornelius' parents, King Colbert and Queen Tabitha, voiced by the late Kenneth Mars and June Foray. God, it really is upsetting that both of them are dead. Anyway, while we don't see them too much in this movie, I think they both want the best for their son, and while Cornelius is trying to find Thumbelina, they try to hold back the winter frost for as long as they can. Now, let's move on to the antagonists, starting with Grundel Toad. Voiced by the late Joe Lynch. This guy is a toad who falls in love with Thumbelina while she and Cornelius were flying by his boat. So, he asks his mother to get her. And later, thanks to his brothers antagonizing him, Grundell becomes hell-bent on marrying her. Next up is Berkeley Beetle voiced by Gilbert Gottfried. Best known as Iago from Disney's Aladdin and Dr. Bender from The Fairly Odd Parents. 
this character is a beetle who owns his own beetle band and is somewhat neutral as he was showing good manners to Thumbelina, even though, in my opinion, it was pretty rude when Beetle called Thumbelina toots, and it was pretty mean when he called her ugly. But later, Beetle is forced by Grendel to help him find Thumbelina without his wings. Next we have Miss Fieldmouse, voiced by the legendary Carol Channing. Who got to be in Happily Ever After, the 1985 Alice in Wonderland miniseries, and the 1990s Adams Family animated series. Now, Miss Field Mouse is a rather greedy yet kind and hospitable Field Mouse. She takes Thumbelina in from the cold and persuades her to marry Mr. Mole. Speaking of which, last but not least, we have Mr. Mole, voiced by the late John Hurt, whom I remember as Ollivander from the Harry Potter film series, the Horned King from the Black Cauldron, and he narrated the Tigger movie. Now, Mr. Mole is a fabulously wealthy, but self-involved and cynical mole, who falls in love with Thumbelina after hearing her voice. To me, Mr. Mole is a bit greedy, but a tad shy. Plus, he hates sunlight, and according to Berkeley Beetle, he pins other beetles to his wall. And now, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Thumbelina is not a good movie in Don Bluth's library. Yes, it started out very promising, but then it goes down and uphill throughout the movie, and the pacing is pretty slow at times. Also, several songs, aside from three of them, are very terrible. On the other hand, a few characters like Thumbelina, Cornelius, and Giacomo are decent, and... I wish that the others, like the Jitterbugs, had more scenes. Plus, the villains are kind of one-dimensional in my eyes, and the voice acting was... okay. And lastly, the animation was pretty good too, since Don Bluth is an underrated animator. So, in other words, this movie is pretty much a downfall in Don Bluth's career. But... If you guys like his works, then go ahead and rent this movie, or watch it online if you want. But it's not something I would recommend for everybody, though. So, I give this movie a rating of 51% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me again for my next blog. Mustang Power.